you have no idea just how jealous I am of all you lovely young people. Green-eyed, totally envious. And no, 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 it's not because you're all young and I've kind of left the first flush of youth about a million years ago. It's because you are at the portals, at the beginnings of one of the most exciting times, the potentially the most exciting period in time that this planet has ever experienced. Times are so exciting you can't believe. That's why I want to be young again. But hey, maybe they can find a way of extending me out a bit. The fourth industrial revolution. So much is happening. So much change, so quickly. And I suppose for you guys, because the majority of, them now, of you now, probably year 11, 12, yeah, looking at what you're going to be doing in the future, where you're going to go to university, what are you going to master in, what are you going to actually do for a job? Really, it's an uncertain time in some ways, not a negative uncertain time, but an uncertain time about just exactly what you'll be doing. Because things are moving so quickly and so rapidly that I cannot tell you what the face of industry will be like in the next five, ten years. I cannot tell you what jobs will be around and what jobs will be popular. Your teachers cannot tell you, your, your parents cannot tell you, your politicians cannot tell you. Because change is massive. Third, fourth industrial revolution. Robots. Oh, we'll get there soon. But so that you can actually benchmark a little bit to know where you should be going in your careers, where you're going, what's happening, then there are two major things that we know that's going to happen in your time or that's happening now that you need to slot into, you need to dove into, dovetail into to know where you're going to be. So where is the world heading, industry-wise and otherwise? Here's an exciting one. Smart cities. Have you heard of smart cities? No? You've not heard of smart cities? Seriously? Have you discussed smart cities? Are you looking forward to living in smart cities? Are you really looking forward to be, being smart citizens in smart cities designed by smart people? Because that's where you're going to be, as sure as eggs is eggs. Mr. Modi's already said, is as soon as we can possibly get them, and they will come. And they will be a blessing to you. They really will be. But you talk to friends, if I talk to friends in architecture or design or whatever, about the face of a smart city. It's amazing how many, many people say, well, we know about them, but we're not quite sure what they're going to be. When I was your age, in the 50s and 60s, when we looked at the 21st century as the space age, how wonderful, or maybe not, yeah? And that's what we kind of thought was going to happen in the 21st century. We're already 20 years into the, um, into the 21st century. And this is from a lovely cartoon uh, thing called The Jetsons. And everybody was living up there in the sky in these bubbles, floating around doing all sorts of strange and wonderful things. Interesting with the bubbles that were up there, they always had a, a pipe that sort of came down to the earth. I always used to wonder what that was fit for, but we won't go there. But, uh, you know, we've gone behind, be beyond that now, haven't we? Because actually the, the dog is driving the vehicle. We don't need anybody to drive vehicles nowadays. Things have gone in that direction. But more likely, perhaps, the idea of technology and technology of cities, maybe that's something you're a little bit more used to. Spa uh, Star Wars, yeah? Mos Eisley, Tatooine. Oh, I love, I love Star Wars. I, I was, remember when I saw the first film, Dolby Sound, unbelievable. What a wonderful experience. But what I sincerely hope is that the smart cities of the future will not reflect what's going on there. That's not what we want. That's what we want, isn't it? Irrespective of all your dreams and fantasies, we're human. We want to be on this planet. We like trees. We like waterways. We like the green area. We love it. It's important to us. Blue skies. 
but it's going to be very helpful with all that if those are the smart cities to have other things like poignantly for us in the NCR, clean air. We ain't got much of that at the moment. Or clean water or good communication systems and good transport and great places to learn, great schools, sustainable industries, etc., etc. Technology is going to do a lot of that stuff for us. We ain't going to do it. Technology is going to do it. So one thing you can be sure of is that you will be living, I hope, in smart cities. But the next big one is this, isn't it? Artificial intelligence. I hate the expression artificial intelligence. I love the concept of artificial intelligence and part of my job today is to make sure that you look forward to it, you don't fear it. But artificial, never thought of it, plastic. I don't like plastic. Anyway, artificial intelligence. And guys, you live with it and you're going to live with it more and more and more and more. This is an image from an article about a guy called Jeremy Rifkin and his um, thoughts and uh, ideas on the third industrial revolution. And uh, it great, wonderful stuff, adopted by many European uh, uh, countries, etc. Um, Three-dimensional printing, excellent, wonderful. Rifkin, so Rifkin talked about the third industrial revolution. In the 1850s was our first industrial revolution. So 170 years ago, in the beginning of last century, there was the second industrial revolution. Less than 10 years ago, Rifkin talked about the third industrial revolution. And now we have the fourth industrial revolution within a, a, a span of 10 years. What is that telling you? It's going faster than you can possibly m imagine. You've got to keep up with it. You've got to be ahead of it. You've got to know how to manage it. And these guys, robots, those are the ones that are driving the whole thing forward. So that's one thing that we've got to understand. You will be living with robots. You will be working with, communicating with robots. It's a definite, it's a hundred percent, nobody's going to stop this now. And lots of people say, ah, lots of people fear robots, don't they? I don't think we've done a, ourselves a service by the way that we've portrayed robots. Things like, I don't watch these kind of films, but you know, Robot Wars or all this, Robocop, all these things. We're kind of like robots are there to splat everybody, kill them all. Not a very clever thing to have actually portrayed, to, you know, whatever. This is a wonderful little uh, two-minute uh, talk on YouTube. I'd like you to turn up at some stage when you've got the time by Professor Mikhail Kaku. Great man to listen to. Brilliant, brilliant man. And he talks about the jobs of the future will be what robots can't do. You see, robots can't do everything. We're all thinking, oh no, robots, robots are going to take over. They're going to, you know, we'll work for the robots. No. The jobs that robots can't do. And he goes through a whole gambit of things, but only in two minutes, of what they can't do and da 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 da. But it comes down for me, and me as, as, a, as a professor of design, importantly, he comes down for me to, from, from my point of view when he says the one thing that robots cannot do. They are not creative. They cannot create. Now that for you guys is a blessing because you're human creatures and you can create and you have original ideas. Let me give you an idea. Let me give you a, a, an example. My world, architecture, design. I get a, I get a, if I, actually, I got a, an email this morning which made me very happy. This is genuine, haven't made it up. But I've been given a project in uh, now I've forgotten where I'm going now, but up in, in the mountains to actually design a home up there. And uh, I'm, I'm just talking, but whatever. And I'm looking forward to that because the particular area I'm looking at, I've never worked in before. I'm looking forward to that project. I'll meet the clients next week and I will sit down with the clients and we will discuss their dream home. Shillong, sorry, Shil love the music, Shillong. 
I will sit with a client and I'll take the brief. Their dream home, what's in their hearts, what they want me to produce for them. And we'll chat and we'll talk about the size of this, the size of that, what the gardens will be like, the special features within the home. And I'll take it in. And I will use my, I like to say, God-given creativity or your evolved creativity, certainly your developed creativity, to actually hear them and put something down on paper. But what I'm doing more and more now, as time goes on, I'm not going to go back to my drawing board and sit there for three months. I'll go back and I'll prepare my original ideas. And then I'll pass it on to my robot friend. He doesn't exist at the moment, or it doesn't exist at the moment. But then my ideas will go to the robot, my robot assistant. And I say, fine, let's get working on this. So the robot assistant looks at all the information they've given and says, fine, let's do the floor plan. Let's see what the house is going to look like. So here, bedrooms here, bathrooms there, this thing there, um, you know, uh, the media center, I don't know. But the robot will start doing my drawings for me much quicker, much more accurately than I will do them. And as long as I've given the robot information sufficient, it'll take the two-dimensional plans and start putting the walls up, make it three-dimensional. Okay, so I've got the elevations and then the robot will do the robot will do the cross sections and all this kind of bits and pieces. While my robot friend is doing that, his it will say to me, I don't want to be gender centric when it comes to robots. I'm sorry, I'm trying to be very you know. It will say to me, Mike, go and have a cup of coffee, go and relax, go and read a book. I know what the building's gonna be like, I know what it's that, I know what it's that now, I know when I do this with it. Um so what and while it, I'm doing all this stuff. Um, I've got all the information in my data bank to work out the engineering of the building. So yeah, I know you want a can you know you want a cantilever balcony there and you want a sunken area there. So I'll just leave it with me. Go and chill out, go and play golf. I'll do all that stuff for you. And you've told me what the materials are, you've told me what the floors are and the walls are and, and, and how you're going to light it. You've given me that information. Let me draw you some very pretty pictures of what that place is going to be like. Wonderful. And at the end of it, I'll give you a walkthrough, a virtual reality. And virtual reality nowadays is almost becoming reality reality, isn't it? Hey, great. Thank you very much indeed. Robot friend. Superstar. I'll just go and chill for a while. And then the robot says, well, okay, look, I know this, I know that, I know... Da, 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 da. Let me tell you how much it's going to cost to produce this. Let me tell you how long it's going to take to do it. You're talking, up, you're talking about up there in Shillong, it rains here, it, this does here, this does whatever. Start it then, and I can tell you, you will finish then. It's all there. It's all, it's all absolutely in place. And then the robot friend will turn around and say, and by the way, if you're building up there and you want this special feature, fabulous bathrooms, fabulous kitchens, this thing, there's a contractor there that can do this. And there's a contractor there that can do that. And to be honest, the ro my robot assistant has done everything I don't want to do. I want to do the creative stuff. My robot friend will do all the rest of it for me. And in a matter of days, probably three days, which would, for something that would take me three months from taking a brief from a client, their dream brief, and the robot's done the nuts and bolts for me, the nitty gritty, and then I can go and discuss it. But I'm so pleased with my robot assistant that I turn around and say, come on, you know, it's really lovely that you're doing this stuff, but come on, let me give you a blank screen, let me give you a stylus, now you create for me an original building. And what will the robot do? Nothing. There's no bit database. You want me to do something original? I, I, I can't find original stuff. I've got lots and lots of information. But even with that information, I, I can't break any rules. I can only work with what I've got. And that is the magic. That is the magic for your future. You will be robot friends, you will be robot guides. Yeah? You will control the robots, hate that word, but you will control the robots. They will not control you. If you do 
continue to develop and grow your creativity. And for that reason, everywhere in the world at the moment, the creative industries are flying, thank God. They really are flying. And in countries all over, creative industries double every year, where lots of other industries are going like this. What about India? There's some uh, notes from Prime Minister Modi's first big talk, very good talk, at uh, the Red Fort a few years back on his bullet points, his 10 bullet points for our country. And every single thing, every one of those things that Modi said that he wanted to achieve, every single one of them has a design solution, a design-led solution. I mean, the most obvious one, of course, is Make in India. That's the big one that everybody's talking about. You can make in India, but to make in India, you've got to have things to make. And to have those things, you've got to design them. It's just common sense. It's logical. Guys, can we also please remember, we are talking about your future. And if you honestly all think, once you've graduated from university or when you leave th this school, you're all going to go all over the world and not come back to India again, please let me tell you that's not going to be the case. India has a massive future, a massive future, a tremendously exciting future if you get it right. So design is massive, but massively important, and it will be massively important to the growth of this country. But I was part of this document here. I, I co-wrote this with the British Council and the uh, National Institute of Design and uh, the Indian Institute of Design. And we looked for the first time ever about the state of design education in India. For the first time ever. And just to give you some shocking, or one or two shocking figures. People talk about India, and then they talk, and they're talking about growth, and they talk about China, don't they? Because it's quite obvious. Kind of same size population and whatever else. But they say, oh, China? Technology, roadway systems, new things, cars, this happening. Wow, look where it's going. Technology, technology, technology. And India, and that's the way it's looked at. China graduates. Now, this figure changes, depends on who you're talking to. But the last time I was given a figure by somebody I deeply respect in the design industry about the number of graduates that China, design graduates, a year that come from China. China graduates 300,000 designers a year. Three lakh designers. India? Any ideas? Well, the highest figure I've been given is 7,000. And th my estimate is 3,000. So China, for every one design graduate that comes out of, in, out of India, or comes from India into industry every year, China has 100. And that's why also from this point of view, I want you to think about your futures and where this country is going. Just look at the benchmarks we've just said. Smart cities are a big part of your future. You don't want to choke to death, do you? You want to leave, live with clean air. That's going to come from technology. Technology is going to come from robots, from artificial intelligence. The people that will control the robots, that will manage the robots, are people who have the creativity that robots don't have. If we don't up the ante in India on the amount of designers that we graduate, we ain't going to get our smart cities. So my last and final plea to you, please think about the creative industries as your future. The rest of the world does. India needs to catch up. Thank you.